Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Today we're talking about rate of change and slope. And I'm gonna show you how to calculate slope, whether it's from a table, a graph, or two ordered pairs. So let's take a look. The first two types of slope we're gonna talk about are positive slope and negative slope. Now, I want you to take a look at these ordered pairs that are here at this table. Negative two, negative two, negative one, zero, and zero, two. If I was to go ahead and plot those points onto this graph here, it would look like this. Now, a line that looks like this has a positive slope. And it has a positive slope because we read graphs from left to right. So if I was to read this graph from left to right, it starts here and it's working its way up. That would be a positive slope. So from left to right, the graph is increasing. Now, calculating the slope from this table is a really easy thing to do. We simply have to look at the x values and see what's happening. How do you go from a negative 2 to a negative 1? You add 1. How do you go from a negative 1 to a 0? You add 1. So I see that my x values are increasing by 1. Then take a look at your, what's happening with your y values. How do you go from a negative 2 to a 0? You add 2. How do you go from 0 to 2? You add 2. So what I'm seeing here in my table is that as my x values are increasing by 1, my y values are increasing by 2s. Now, the formula for calculating slope from a table is simply delta y over delta x. Now, delta is that triangle-looking letter. It's the Greek letter for d, delta, and we use that to explain the differential. And differential has that root word difference in it, and difference means to figure out what's happening. How do you go from one value to the next? So, the differential in y over the differential in x, delta y over delta x. Well, the change in my y values is a positive 2, and my change in my x values is 1. So if I set up this ratio of 2 over 1, that's telling my slope, telling me my slope is 2. Calculation-wise, in my graph, I would also be able to do rise over run. Rise over run simply means I go from any one point on my graph, and I calculate how do I go from one point to the next. So if I was to look at this point here, my rise is a positive 2. I'd have to go up 2 units and then to the right, 1 unit. 2 over 1 is 2. So this would be a nice positive slope, a positive slope of 2. Let's take a look at what a negative slope would look like. So a negative slope, if I was to plot these three points, negative 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 1, it would look like this. And again, we read a graph from left to right. So if I was reading this graph from left to right, it's decreasing. That's going to mean that there's a negative slope. Let's take a look. Our x values are increasing by 1s. What do you notice our y values are doing? How do you go from 3 to 2 to 1? You actually decrease by 1. So if I set up this ratio of delta y over delta x, delta y over delta x, the change in y over the change in x, it would be negative 1 over positive 1, which is negative 1. And if I show you that rise over run method, if I go from any one point and I want to go to the next point, I'd have to go down one unit on my y values and then to the right one unit. And negative 1 over 1 brings me back to this negative 1 slope. Let's take a look at a couple practice problems of positive and negative slopes. So here, I have this equation of y equals 1 half x minus 2. If I go ahead and I fill in a table of values, let's see, if I plug in a negative 2, Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Let's go to the next one. If I plug in a 0, half of 0 is 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Let's plug in a positive 2. Half of positive 2 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Now, let's see what's happening in our table. My x values are increasing by 2. My y values are increasing by 1. Delta y over delta x. The change in my y values is a positive 1. The change in my x values is a positive 2. And that's my slope. My slope is 1 half. Now, I'm going to just put a yellow box around this 1 half because I want you to also notice, look, that 1 half is actually in our equation. That's where the slope lives in our equation. If I was to plot these three points, here is what my graph would look like. Okay, And if I wanted to do my rise over run strategy that I mentioned before, you would go to any point on your graph and you would calculate, how do I go from one point to the next point? I would have to rise one 
and then I'd have to run two. And rise over run, one over two, would be this. Now, someone might use different points. Let's say you started here, but you wanted to go to this point. You could rise two, and then run one, two, three, four. And what is two over four? Simplifies to one half. You would get the exact same thing. Now, the last thing you could do to find slope is you can take two, any two ordered pairs. I'm going to take the first two ordered pairs, so a negative 2, negative 3, and 0, negative 2, and you can label them. x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. And if I plug those three, uh, four values rather into this slope formula, where I calculate my difference in y's. Difference in y's, that sounds like differential in y, because that's what it is. I want to calculate the difference in y's, so my change in y over my change in my x's. So notice it's y's over x's, just like it was here. If I plug those four points in, it would look like negative 2 minus a negative 3. Notice what's happening in the formula. It's y sub 2 minus y sub 1, so negative 2 minus negative 3. And then x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so 0 minus a negative 2. Now, subtracting a negative in both of these becomes positive. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, and I get my slope of 1 half. So look at this. Whether it's rise over run, it's delta y over delta x, or it's using my slope formula, or even seeing that slope right here in the equation, it's all the same value. Let's take a look at a negative slope now. So I'm giving you this equation. Let's make a table. So let's plug in a negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. What do I see is happening in my x values? They are increasing by 1. What's happening with my y values here? 3 goes to 1 by subtracting 2. 1 goes to negative 1 also by subtracting 2. So my change in y over my change in x is negative 2 over 1, which is simply negative 2. Now remember, I mentioned before, that this slope, delta y over delta x, is here in our equation. That is our slope. It's actually telling us what's happening. If I take these three ordered pairs and I plot them, here's what my graph would look like. If I wanted to calculate rise over run from this graph and I take any point, my rise to go from this point to the next point would be to go down 2. So that's a negative 2. And then I'd have to run 1. So negative 2 over 1 is, again, negative 2, which is the exact same slope value. Last strategy I could do is I could take any two ordered pairs. So let's say I took the first two ordered pairs, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, so 1 minus 3, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, 0 minus that negative 1. So again, I just simply plug in my four numbers into this equation, which ends up becoming negative 2 over 1, which is just still negative 2. So we're seeing slope in every possible form. Now I'm going to have us go back. And besides positive and negative slopes, you could have a zero slope or an undefined slope. So if I gave you these three ordered pairs and you were to graph them, what you're going to notice is that you get a horizontal line. Okay. And if I was to actually look at the change, my x values are increasing by ones, but my y values they're not changing. And I could say they're plus zero, minus zero, it really wouldn't matter. This is what's called a zero slope. Because if I set up delta y over delta x, my change in y over my change in x, zero over one, you divide zero by any number other than zero, you're going to get zero. It's a zero slope. This is a horizontal line. A zero slope has a horizontal line. The equation of this line is actually where it goes through the y-axis. So because this horizontal line is going through the y-axis at 2, the equation of this line is y equals 2. Look at the table. y is always equal to 2. So guess what the equation is? y equals 2. Undefined is the opposite. Here, if I was to plot these three points, we're going to see an undefined slope is actually a vertical line. My x values have no change. My y values are increasing by 1. If I was to do delta y over delta x, you'd get 1 divided by 0. And you've learned at this point, you do not divide by 0. You can't. Okay? You just can't. You cannot divide by 0. You can have 0 out of 1 cookies. You ate 0 cookies. But you can't have 1 cookie out of 0 cookies. It's undefined. There's no numerical value for it. 
And again, that's a vertical line. The equation for this line, I'm actually going to add it in. This one was y equals 2 because y's were always equal to 2. So if this one is x and they're all equal to 2, guess what this equation is? x equals 2. Let's take a look at some practice problems of this skill. y equals 3. So guess what? y equals 3 means x can be anything in the world, but what's the y value always going to be equal to? 3. My x values, let's say I made them negative 1, 0, 1. You can make them anything you want. doesn't matter. They can increase by whatever, but your y values aren't going to change. So your delta y over delta x is just 0. If I graph this, it's a nice horizontal line at y equals 3. If I was to do rise over run for this, guess what? To go from one point to the next point, I don't go up any. I just go across 1. So if I rise 0 and run 1, it's just 0. If I go ahead and I take two any, any two ordered pairs and I go ahead and I plug these into my formula, what happens when you do 3 minus 3? It's 0. And 0 divided by any number is going to be just 0. Last example for us. x equals negative 3. So x equals negative 3 would mean your x values are always going to all be negative 3. Your y values can really be anything you want. Your change in your x is absolutely nothing. Your y values, let's say they're increasing by 1s or 2s or whatever you want to fill them in as. But the moment you go ahead and you plug the delta y over delta x, you're going to get undefined. Anytime 0 is in your denominator, it's undefined. Our graph is going to be a vertical line. Now, I do have an error in this graph. I've actually graphed this as x equals negative 2. So I'm going to fix that up for us. This is where our three points would be. Okay, and I'm just going to wipe the other one out. I'm also not going to edit this out of my video because I want to show you that teachers make mistakes sometimes and that's completely okay. All right. And if I was to do rise over run, now take a look at this. I could start at any point. I can rise one, but look what happens the moment I rise one. Do I need to run at all? No. So it's zero. So one over zero is again undefined. You can't divide by zero. If you put in your calculator, it's going to say error. Your calculator didn't just magically break all of a sudden. You can't do it. There is no number. And if I take any two ordered pairs and I plug them into this formula, and I do y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, your denominator, since they're the same numbers and you're subtracting them, will just become 0, and it's undefined. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you for slope. Take a look at my other videos if you need any more help. Thanks, guys.